Alright guys, so I'm back with a new video, and this one is you know, um, something I've been planning to do for a while. I wanted to wait till the game was fully complete and out before I did this, and personally, this is a really special game to me because it it's one of those games that got me in to my current state in life because um, it was one of the first pieces of furry entertainment I consumed in 2018, and it's really close to me. It's one of these, it's a furry visual novel, obviously, and I have had genuine experiences with this visual novel since 2018, because of the back then there were only two routes, I think, with this dude's... Actually, no, it would have been Carl and Leo, I'm pretty sure. I don't remember exactly, but it was either this one and this one, this one and this one. Like, still. I think it'll just be best if I hop in. mention that that monologue is very important to the main theme, the central theme of the visual novel itself, cycles and all that shit. Okay, here we go. Yeah, mom, I brought it. No, no, I've got everything. No, TJ's with us. We picked him up yesterday. No, I, I did call you yesterday, but there was no answer. Fine. Yeah, I'll try more than once next time. So I'm, of course, they're clean. Listen, I'm driving right now, so... Yeah, so I shouldn't be on the phone, should I? I'm gonna hang up. Okay, I love you too. Bye. I sigh and finally hang up the phone, dropping on my lap. TJ, next to me in the passenger seat, stretches back and scratches behind his ear. Oh, that's cute. It's been a while since I've seen your mom. How is she? I shrug. Fine, I think. She wouldn't tell me if she was anyway. TJ taps his foot against the dashboard before yawning. Wow, it feels like we've been driving for days. Normally, TJ wasn't one to whine, but the long drive was obviously getting to him. It was getting to all of us, honestly. I look over at him. We're almost there. Why don't you listen to some music or something? Your phone's been dead for the past two hours. I didn't know it would take us eight hours to get here. I sigh. Whether that dig was purposeful or not, I still feel a little embarrassed. I'll admit, I got us lost for a few hours. Route 93 is hard to find, even with the GPS. It's no wonder that it echoes in the state that it's in. Uh, I hate that word now. I mean, I don't hate it, but it just has so many different connotations in my head. You should have brought a book. Those are one of batteries. I look up in the rearview mirror and see Jenna hold up a hefty book titled Cognition. TJ sighs. All of my books are on my phone. I listen to the radio. He just starts to reach for the dial. Don't bother, I'll be get out here at Hick stations. I have some music on my phone, though. Do you have an aux cable chase? I am so bad at fucking girl voices, I swear. Miss Quonker? No, but like I said, we're almost there. Just having three of us here is a little awkward. Balanced. I wonder if completing our little group will bring back that old chemistry. Thinking about seeing Carl, Flynn, and Leo again makes my heart skip a beat. Take exit 127 onto Flynn Road. I jerk back to the present and press on the bricks I swerve on the exit ramp. Whoa! Sorry, sorry. Chase, come on, pay attention. TJ adds a little giggle to light the chest, ties my face gets hot anymore. Hey, me and Jenna went three hours of our way to pick you up from CCU. You could have taken the bus. Oh no, I'm grateful. I'd just rather this not be the place I die. 
continue down Flint Road for about 15 minutes in silence while I avoid the ever-increasing number of potholes in the road. I think we're all a little nervous now as we get close to our destination. Yeah, no shit. Unsurprising there's another car in sight. Guys excited? I look at my rearview mirror again and see that Jen has put down her book, staring out the window. I actually haven't kind of given a whole lot of thought about as to how I feel about them. I'm just gonna answer what I fucking feel. I don't know. It's been a while since we've been all together. Things don't think, think things will be the same. I'm an echo. Are you excited to go back? Oh. I really didn't know how to answer that. Is excited the right word? It sure as hell stressful. <laughs> no shit, dude. As long as we can go for a hike. I don't want to be sitting around in a motel all day. Well, it beats having a heat stroke in the desert. Are you seriously hiking the trail? Oh, come on. It'll be fun. At least I know Chase will come. AJ smiles at me, raising his brows. It's too hard to say no to such an eager face. At least right now. Yeah, yeah, of course. Anyway, it sounds like you got you only got the boys in your mind, Chase. Leo, maybe? Make a slight ride onto Lake Emma Road. Fuck that lake, seriously. <sighs> I ignore Jenna pretending to be distracted with adjusting the GPS. A few more minutes of silence pass before Jenna speaks up again. So, this news thing you're making, what's it about exactly? I swerve a little to avoid another pothole. A news packet? If you remember, there was that one crazy thing that happened here in the early 1900s. I read a little about it, and it's pretty fucked up. Come on, Chase, language. Just thought I'd do a little bit more digging. Honestly, though, I just need to make something that looks good enough to pass with. That sounds kind of fun. You can have enough time to hang out. I know Leo made some plans. This whole thing was Leo's idea, actually. When I told him I'd be coming down to Echo for spring break, he suggested we all use it as an excuse to have a reunion. He says it hasn't been the same since the three of us left. Yeah, I should. We just need some B-roll and shots of the old creepy locations. It shouldn't take too long. Okay, just an aside here, just a brief aside. Then, the, the, what Chief was just talking about, the fucked up shit in, in the early 1900s, there's another visual novel out there called The Smoke Room, which is, ba which is the prequel to this one. However, it's very... It's weird, because I can't really go into that without giving away spoilers. So, um, I, I would just say, if you like this playthrough, if you like the series I'm gonna make, then go read that, because you should. As well as Arches, that one's also really good. It's the sequel to this one, taking place in 2020. This one takes place in 2015, and the smoke room takes place in 1915. Anyway, back to the fucking thing. Shouldn't take too long. I catch a flash of blue and see the lake to our right. The conversation dies down a bit, and pretty soon we're all lost in our own thoughts. Finally, round a bend, I start to catch some glimpses of the town. Tall, rusted signs with the gas station and motel loom over the rest of the old community. Lake Emma Road merges right into Main Street where the motel is at. Soon enough, we're, running, we're turning in the parking lot. Oh, fuck. I have to be honest with you guys, I... I have had actual nightmares over this game. Um, uh, I would also like to say, right away before it gets really bad, which isn't really for a bit, but still, once it gets to the route choice, it that's that's when it gets to the point where I would highly suggest that if you are susceptible to scary shit, as well as if you're like really depressed and you're not in a good mental space, I would highly suggest you go watch this video because I'm it's literally on the fucking itchio page. Do not play this if you have mental issues. Put your mental well-being first. Like I'm just gonna say that now. Um, the prologue isn't that bad, it only lasts about an hour or two, hour and three minutes at most, actually, but, like, after that, that's when the stuff starts going crazy, so that's when the routes start, and some of the things in this visual novel I'm going to say right now, um, 
Yeah, they're not for the faint of heart. They're really not. And I would highly suggest that if you are susceptible to that kind of stuff, then just don't, just don't watch beyond the end of the prologue. You'll know when it happens. Anyway, back into the narration. There are only a few other cars in the parking lot. I park in the closest spot next to the door and switch off the ignition. I need to be done with the driving. I sit back from what run my eyes. Ugh, I hope you're grateful, CJ. I never want to drive that one again. Thanks, Chase. God, I, 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 I am sick of this. And now you're gonna get, you're gonna get to see the sprites. Tuju hops out of the car, clearly happy to be out. And there's there's TJ, the precious boy. Oh, I love him. She puts his paws to his back and stretches out from toes to ear tops, and I hear a few cracks. Gosh, it feels good to be out of there. I smile as I follow him out and stretch as well, a less flamboyant way. It's good to see TJ bring back to his old cheerful self. Uh, I, I'm still not used to that sprite. I really am not. <laughs> See, when I started playing back in 2018, Jenna's and Leo's sprites were completely different to what they look like now. You'll meet Leo in a second, but like, um... <laughs> I'm glad they changed them because, um, they were kind of bad back then, but like, I, I'm not used to them still. It's weird. I'll go, I'll go, I'll check us in. You boys want to bring in our stuff? Sure. Me and TJ head around to the trunk of the car, keying our bags and a camera equipment while Jenna heads inside. I'm pleasantly surprised. While it's a bit musty, <laughs> like you, Chase, musky shit, the room is spacious and generally clean, a lot more than I was expecting from a town like Echo. Although I've lived in the town for most of my life, I've never actually been in the motel. Well, why would you go to a motel in the town you live in, Chase? That makes no sense. Hey, this is nice. Two double beds. Yeah, I thought I'd get one of the nice rooms where everything here is dirt cheap. She just sets his bags down on the bed. So I guess this will be me and Chase's bed. Jenna can have her own, obviously. That's nice of you, TJ. Anyway, are your keycards? She hands us both our keycards, which I slip into my back pocket. So when are we gonna eat? I'm starving. My stomach grumbles. We haven't eaten since breakfast until the late afternoon at this point. I pull out my phone, checking over my text with Leo. Leo said he's gonna bring us some sandwiches from the diner. Did you tell? Yes, I told him to substitute the bread with lettuce for yours, TJ. Nice. All right, well, I've texted everyone that we're here. Let's at least unpack. It's gonna get a little crowd and I don't want all our stuff in the way. Ugh. Half an hour later, we've got our st all our stuff packed and we have the motel drawers. Now I'm sitting on the bed, toying with like, my camera clip while TJ watches TV and Jenna organizes her schoolwork. You know, you're on vacation, right? And didn't you want to get gra to grad school? You should relax. That's exactly why I need to be keeping up. There's a knock at the door, and being the closest I get up to answer it. Carl. <laughs> I love Carl. I'll get it. I look at the people excitedly and see a beaming cat with a pair of some very familiar horns poking through it. I grin as I unlock the door and swing it open. Carl! Chase. I can't do that kind of- I'm, I- Here's the thing that really sucks about this. The next two characters, Leo and Flynn, have both deep voices, and I suck at differentiating them. I slap pause with them and pull them into a hug, and immediately get a whiff of the punch and set a pot. Despite that, his embrace is warm. Of course, this is like the fucking furry shit. <laughs> his belly is squishing in my body like a pillow through his jacket. There is an underlying sturdiness though, and I feel his biceps bulge around my shoulders. I'm working out, but my paws on his shoulders and pushing back, looking him over. He's changed a bit since I've last seen him. It's really bulkier, and the fur in his face is a bit shaggy. His eyes are a little red, and his expression is a little glazed, like he's daydreaming about some place far away from here. Still getting blazed, huh? I know it. 
his joking nature drops a bit as it gives me a genuine smile. Okay, just a brief aside, every single time I see Carl, I, 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 I cannot not think of McSkinny, one, one of the creators of the game. Like, I'm sorry, I just can't. <laughs> if you're watching this, by the way, stop. It's good to see you again. Wow, that sucked. I feel warm inside and smile back. You too. Is that Carl I hear? Carl and I step back in the room and the ram remains slouched as we do. Hey, Jenna. Carl, how you been? Not bad, just living life like I'm a bee. It sounds like he's starting to sing lyrics to a song, but he trails off as we look at him expectantly. He just smiles back. <sighs> Fuck, he is so introverted and I hate seeing myself in him. Huh? Hey, is that TJ? Hi. Though he's smiling happily, TJ's outright crinkling his nose. Still up to your habits, huh? Carl shrugs. I'm starting to remember that it's something he does a lot. His hands to almost everything. It gets quiet for a moment and I clap my paws together. So, what have you been up to, Carl? You're not in London often. Carl shrugs. Oh, you know, just hanging out. Must be kind of boring considering it's Echo. Not going outside helps. Been able to find a job. I know they closed the little corner market used to work at. Yeah, it kind of been kind of hard since pretty much everything around here is closing. Top of that, I still haven't still don't have a car that can get me to Peyton. Oof, that's right. You crashed the one your parents got you. DJ is grinning sympathetically, but Carl hunches further in himself, looking sulky. Man, don't kill my vibe. What about school? Trying to lose that far away look as he narrows his eyes. You should, you went for like what a semester? That's not really enough time to tell if you're really cut out for college. Classes get easier to handle once you get used to it. Yeah, well, it wasn't exactly the score that was the problem. You could try smoking less weed, that might help. Well, uh, I just look at that. Is this, was I set up for an intervention or something? Carl looks over at me as if asking for help. Hey, don't look at me, I had to deal with them for the past 10 hours. Yeah, I guess I just forgot how naggy they can be. That's because we care about you, Carl. Anyway, I'm pretty sure Chase has been missing you ever since you left school. Carl and I were in the same class throughout school. As a result, we entered college together. We even roomed together for that one semester, which was a lot of fun. Of course I'd missed him. Carl seems pretty eager to get off the topic, though. Speaking of school, didn't you get accepted to Weston, Jenna? Yep, going into experimental psych. I start in the fall. C excuse me. That's pretty cool. Congrats. Carl turns back to me. And you're into journalism, right? He looks over the equipment, looking confused. What's all this? That one and that one too deep. Okay. But oh, yeah. One of the reasons I'm way I'm out here. I'm doing a new segment. Sounds like the feel-good move of the year, Chase. That's should get out of the feel-good town of the century, Carl. <laughs> yeah. Carl scratches his muzzle before turning to TJ. And you're doing what again? Sports, some Bible Olympics. Athletic training, but yes, it's Christian school. Carl gives a thumbs up. Super. So we can eat? I'm hungry as hell. That was a little extreme there, Carl. Not even you can be that hungry. Mm-hmm, sure. Where's Leo? He's bringing the sandwiches, right? He actually just texted me that he's here. He was picking up Flynn. So we're all gonna be here, just like old times. Chicha almost looks like a little kid looks like I think he's twitching around. He's like... Oh, there they are. Oh, uh, boy, the two hardest voices to do. I grip the bedspread and watch as Carl moves around the corner to open the door. I hear it open, followed by the distinctive, deep, brassy voice of Flynn. Hey, why are you getting the door? That's fucking Carl. Good grief. <laughs> hey, I genuinely can't do these voices. It's fucking awful. Hey, why are you getting the door, fatty? Yeah, my sandwich is a dick face. I got bunchy like a mother. Hey, where are they? Leo has him. Here he is. 
Oh boy, how am I supposed to do this fucking piece of shit? I don't even... I guess I just gave y'all my opinion of Leo, fuck. Hey, are y'all in there? My heart skips a beat, my tail thumps the bed, I hear Leo's high baritone. There's some bustling, but they start coming around the corner, bringing me face to face with the rest of my childhood friends. <laughs> Fucking Gila lizards, I swear. <laughs> Flynn comes through, slinking and casually, his posture loose and relaxed, slouching. Unlike Carl, though, his slouch makes him look like he just doesn't give a fuck as opposed to trying to make himself seem smaller. It wasn't a shy guy, as evidenced by his open shirt. I know you call him a dick face. Flynn knocks Carl on the bed on the head, which makes a loud fucking sound, but Carl just grins throughout. Hey, Jenna, TJ, Chase. He nods to each of us and turn with his knuckles. Uh, I fucking hate you. <laughs> I fucking hate Leo. Immediately following him, his arms wrapped around two big brown paper bags as Leo. He smiles over the tops of the bags, sweeping the room with his eyes along with his tar rectangular ears. Pauses on Jenna and TJ before finding me. Yes, of course, because you're totally still dating, you piece of fucking shit. His face immediately breaks into a full on grin as he walks over the bed I'm sitting on and sitting down the bag. I, I think, I, I don't know. As he comes to a stop in front of me, I reach out with thought to slap his like I did with Carl. Instead, he grabs it, he yanked me up, he right up, up right into a tight bear hug, and he squeezed the air out of me. Fucking boundaries, prick. <laughs> I say as if they haven't fucked each other multiple times. Jeez, that was way too deep. Good grief. Man, I missed you. Just like Carl, it seemed Leo's gotten bigger and stronger. He lifted me up without even trying. The tension I've been feeling in my chest melts away like an ice cube and I go sidewalk. Everything's fine. All of that worry about how he's going to react was for nothing. The hug is lasting kinda long, though. I can feel everyone else looking at us. And just like that, he forgets we exist. Leo finally does pull back, then smacking me on the shoulder for turning to reach out into TJ. I shakily sit back down, feeling a whole lot better now that introductions are on the way. Good God, Flynn. Fuck, leave Carl on her own for five seconds. It smells like goddamn skunk sun. Weed is just oozing out your pores at this point. Flynn theatrically plugs his nostrils as he pulls the window open the crack. Carl rolls his eyes, slouching further and jamming his paws into his pockets. Oh, shut up. I think everyone here agrees that my smell is a lot better than your shedding. Nothing like leaving a big pile of lizard dust in the cap for the next person. And by the way, dude, that skunk comes species. And that wizard coming wasn't. Flynn turns to me, kind of here, in from the outside with his hand. What's worse, Chase, Carl's smell or my dusting off? <laughs> dusting off, that's not a thing. Try saying white flicks and shit bob me with every step I take, so when I scratch my ass, then it's like a fucking blizzard of dead skin. And some it like that in your mouth. That's what you should call it. Hey, you're fur you fur well do it too, it just looks noticeable. Either way, it's hot in here. Are you gold blooded? Someone turned down the goddamn thermostat. Somebody turned down your language. TJ says it to him like a true from kindergarten teacher pep talking a student to using his words. They stare at each other for about five seconds, Flynn's expression like a stone while TJ loses his smile. Uh, well, Jesus, but fucking Christ, I'll be sure to watch that. Flynn! TJ actually is pretty upset when Flynn just reaches out and yanks him to a chokehold, the much shorter legs easily dwarfed by the wizard. Ah, uh, shut up, you priss, I'm just kidding. TJ half horribly fights the hole. I guess TJ thought he'd get some respect out of all adults. Hey, ow! You, you still said it. Normally I might step in to help, but it's been a while since I've seen Flynn and TJ go at it. It's just too funny to stop. Look, no lightning. So much for almighty g- mm. TJ jabs his elbow back into Flynn's stomach, doubling the list over for a second. Ah, 
See, God works in mysterious. Ow! Flynn reaches up and grabs one of the ear t- one of the tufts on Tita's ears and yanks, earning a yowl from the feline. Foul species features. Species features was something we made up to make our tussle world more, more, more fair. It involved any of the stinks, physical difference between our species and my pose as a disadvantage, like my tail, Jenna's ears, or TJ's ear tops. Carl was especially keen on it. Being a ram is going rough and used to leverage against him. TJ, come get your sandwich. He finally eats himself out of Flynn's grass, moving down his shore as he tries to look as dignified as possible. I can see things haven't changed. That TJ walks over the table to get his food. I can't help but laugh. I think TJ won that one by technicality. Or did he? He might have fouled too. Flynn's got a soft lizard belly. Flynn snores up in his stomach. Oh, don't even try to tell about soft ass. It looks like you swallowed a beach ball. Speaking of which, food! We all pass the bags around to get our food. Chicken sandwich for Jen and TJ, roast beef for me and Leo, and three large veggie burgers that almost take up their own bag for Carl. Flynn, as usual, isn't eating anything. I think it's a lizard thing. I keep my seat in my bed as I wrap the flare on my sandwich. The smell wafts off from the beef, making my mouth water and bringing some memories up with it. We'd all spent many nights at the old diner. I remember the night me and Carl graduated. Leo took us all straight from Peyton High to the diner, skipping out on the all-night graduation party for sandwiches and milkshakes. Take a huge bite and yellow bell pepper slips out the other end, landing back in the foil. Whoa, slow down, you're gonna choke. Suddenly I'm almost falling over the sides, something heavy plants itself next to me on the bed. Fuck you, Leo. I quick, quickly grab a napkin and bring it on my muzzle, wipe away the grease. Hey, Leo. Leo chuckles my embarrassment and wraps his own sandwich. Sorry if I put the bread's a little soggy. Garbo over there take a sweet time getting to the car. Hey, working the town hall, serious business. I don't have a fa- I don't have a family business like a Walt salad of like you. Hey Flynn, I'll bet you that I can eat this whole burger in one minute. Is that a fucking joke? Of course you can. <laughs> yeah, but what about two burgers? Don't show, Carl. I decided to keep the conversation in Leo's job, since that's the whole reason why he's still here. Is business still pretty good? Yes, Peyton's getting bigger, so is the number of customers. I guess it's a good thing your dad went out at Echo, huh? For sure, the place is turning to a ghost town. Probably will be another decade or two. For some standards, there already is. I take another bite of my sandwich, buying right into another bell pepper forgotten how good the diner food is. The thing about this is Leo is, is Hispanic and I can't do an accent like that, so I know it's TJ sitting next to Jen at the table picking up half plate as well as wrapped chicken. Jenna seems to as well as she leans towards him. What's wrong, TJ? It's just, never mind, it doesn't matter. chicken. Here. No, you don't have to. Jenna picks up TJ's sandwich and swaps it out. Swaps out his grilled chicken. She rips off the layer of mayo-tainted tainted lettuce from his lettuce bun before swapping her chicken in. There, how's that? Thanks. It's then that TJ looks up and sees Leo and I staring at him. He sees the ears flat in embarrassment. What? Yeah, nothing, TJ. Nothing. So are your parents still letting you live in the house here in Echo? Yes, they are. Yes, we actually tried to sell last year, but of course no one bought. I think two people came to look, but took off once they saw the town. Anyone parents are living in Peyton in a house twice as big as the old one. Well, it must be pretty cool living in your own house. My parents aren't constantly breathing down my neck, so that's, you know, nice. We had already finished his first sandwich, and now he's unwrapping the second. You sure could eat a lot. How many people are still here anyway? In the town, I mean. Leo takes him to bite and you hear the crunch of the pepper through his muzzle. He chews thoughtfully for a little over swallowing. Mmm, not too sure. 
course, I know almost everyone here, but most don't actually live here anymore. Most everyone's turned their old house into a sort of vacation home now. Really? Why? I can't imagine anyone coming here for a vacation. Unless you're probably their meth and dying of heat stroke. Well, they've all, they've all got their old houses here and it's cheap to build. And the town is actually trying to turn their old lake into a recreational thing. Like Emma? Yeah, they're putting docks and stuff. Huh. Lake Emma is the old reservoir just a few minutes outside of town. As kids, we used to play around there all the time. It was generally an ugly place. Dead fish in the banks, a terrible smell, and mosquitoes everywhere. Not to mention one other thing. But, yeah. Then again, it could have changed since then. I haven't been there in 12 years now. None of us have. Something about the lake is making my stomach tighten again. Forcing my appetite in the process. And there's the thing. There's the chink in the armor. point I need to learn to get over things. Actually, that reminds me. The others are pretty deep in their own conversations, but I lower my voice anyway. We'll lean into Leo. Hey, Leo. <sighs> Leo turns to me. He's been in the middle of a massive bite. Now he's in bell pepper, half hanging out his muzzle. That throws off my train of thought for a second. Uh, oh yeah. So I wanted to get some shots of Lake for my project. Leo ducks his head to pull the pepper from and shove her back in a second later. He chews for a while, but his ears are still tipped toward me, so I go on. It's kind of important to echo history. Anyway, he told me that on Monday everyone's free during lunch. I can tell by the set of Leo's ears that he knows where, where I'm going, and he's not too into the idea. I quickly go on. Of course, we don't have to, but it's been a long time, and if the town is making it look better, it could be fun. Listen, Chase. I feel my face burn a little bit with the fur. Sorry, it was a dumb idea. No, no, Chase. If I were to me, I'd definitely do it. It's just... Leo looks toward Flynn as I do as well. I am still bantering with Carl. It doesn't matter how fucking fast you eat, I'm not gonna be impressed. He's got that classic Flynn look on his face where he's pressing his lips together, trying not to smile. What if I eat all three? You've already eaten most of the first one, so that's not gonna happen now, is it? I look back down at my sandwich. I suddenly feel really guilty. Here I am, back after three years, just assuming that I know how everyone feels. Now I'm kind of feeling like an imposter. <sighs> Fuck off, no more. If I see a single Among Us comment, you will be, your comment will be deleted. Leo knows it's like he always did, he nudges me with his shoulder. Hey, don't worry about it, it's not your fault. Suddenly Leo's ears perk up, and I know I suddenly had an idea. His ears made him easily readable. Just as reading people came easily to him, it made it all the more impressive to be able to tell most of us were thinking. Considering my short study years, or Flynn would like thereof. Listen, there's a cool little spot by the river that's actually pretty close to the lake. We could have a bunch and you could walk over and get your shots. The idea makes me feel a little bit better. Alright, that could be fun. Also, this motel doesn't have a pool, so it'd be really nice to swim in something. Eh. Otters in their waters. Anyone will have to ask for them, but I think we'll be okay with it. What would really impress me is if you didn't eat the rest. You're a funny guy, Flynn. Carl goes right back to shove the next burger into his mouth as Flynn looks on in mild disgust. Suddenly, Yos is watching him and he gives us an odd look. That slowly morphs into a smirk as he focuses on Leo. And here comes the truth. Fucking Flynn, one of my favorite characters in this fucking visual novel. Looking pretty happy there, Leo. Not like you've been for the past three years. I throw my brown confused look up at Leo. I see him shift and he's giving Flynn a look that I don't quite understand. Well, of course I'm happy to see us all back together again. I look from Leo to Flynn, it's pretty easy to imagine a bolt of electricity between them. You should have seen him chase. He'd go days without smiling. Great. Leo's been kind of a dick ever since you guys left. Isn't Jenna counselor? Hey, you should have an obsession with Leo. Um, I'm still an undergrad. I'm not going to counseling anyway. I'm just going to be sad. So she's busy trying to hold a sandwich together and eat at the same time. Not very successfully, but it looks up as well. 
Okay, a quick, a quick, a quick thing. I literally, it, it's so ironic that Genesis, I'm not going to count singing. Because, like, I, there's this one fic that I, that I read. Really good, by the way, you should read it. But still, um, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. When you're depressed, it's hard to imagine you not smiling. You seem fine on line. There's something going on with you. For the first time since he's arrived, Leo looks truly uncomfortable. Mm, I wonder why. Maybe because you're being call called out in your bullshit piece of garbage. You don't see him like that very often. Quinn, on the other hand, is has just tried not to smirk face on. Hey, hey. Leo pauses, but he's down everyone's eyes in the room, and he takes his frustrated breath. Can people be sad sometimes? Yes, things have been more... have been harder, but I'm fine. I think it's pretty clear that Flynn... Leo flicks his long muzzle at the wizard. He's just trying to get some reactions. Sure, I'm just saying you're back to your old self. Seriously, it's great. Leo makes a snorting sound. About to ask Leo what's so stressful when he lifts his paw up again to take a bite of his almost finished sandwich. I go quiet as I look at his paw. A silver anchor tied around his wrist with leather. The word otter is etched into the shank of the anchor. The name Chase is engraved into the stock. Why was he still... Chase! I jump as teacher's voice breaks through my trance, bouncing on the bed as I come down. Leo looks at me as the bed wobbles, an eyebrow raised. JJ puts a paw to his muzzle. Oops, sorry. You were just kind of staring off into space. Yeah, just thinking about stuff. What's up? You were just talking about the last game. Didn't you, didn't you tell me you saw that movie on the drive here? I really don't get. I really don't get you right now, TJ. Last game was the worst Lions Brigade movie. You're just mad because they didn't follow the comics. Yeah, Carl, the movie's just the movie was just way it was just better. I'm sure the comics are great too, though. Nah, the comics are shit. Carl tried showing to me once. Ugh. See, this is the problem. Never follow the source material, and no one cares because they have no respect for the originals, man. Way too picky, Carl. The last game was a great movie. Now you too, Leo. I don't know, I think Lions Brigade was always a bit too violent for me, but with all the shooting and punching. I always liked the Charity Weasel. She's the Pinky Man superheroine. Carl weighs his paw dismissively. The Trinity comics have always been pretty lame. They're jerk off on for lonely nerds, and so is the movie. <laughs> you mean like yourself? Hey. Hold up, we're talking about Trini now. Julia Blasco, she's hella fine. Never seen ass like hers on a weasel before. Like you should talk, Flynn. You're fucking gay. <laughs> That's because it's fake. No, I, I just like the story. It's really, really, it's really kind of deep when you think about it. It was hard to think about when half the shots are slow mo. She's doing all these flips and back bends and shit. I didn't think that was your sort of thing anyway, Flynn. Flynn is in a time to retort before Jenna shifts her attention, seemingly coming to his defense. Come on, Trinity does have has Trinity does have more story going on than your average superhero movie. I think it's great that you like her character over all the meatheads. Yeah, they just stuck at it, just stuck at all the boob shots thrilling the dummies. Of course, it's easy for someone like you to say. Besides, I see what's going on here. Maybe you should watch Luce Lobo, TJ. He's shirtless the whole time. TJ's ears go flat. Puffs, Tufts point at the ground. This is so... Every single interaction between Flynn and TJ now, except for the ones that aren't so nice, are just... Mmm. I better step with a saucy talk. The only way those get more awkward if you got sprung. We all are grown in unison, but TJ shoots right back. And knowing you, that's exactly what you want to happen, isn't it, Flynn? That gets a few surprise chuckles. Damn, TJ, where'd that come from? It isn't that it's a particularly good joke, it's... It's that it came from TJ that makes it so funny. I don't think I've ever heard him talk like that. Even Flynn can't keep from grinning a little bit. Okay, so we're getting toward the end of this day, and after this I'm gonna... End the video. We talk late in the afternoon. 
At this point, all my worries have disappeared, leaving a happy, warm feeling in its place. It seems silly that I've been ner so nervous earlier. In fact, I'm starting to look forward to the rest of the week. That'll change! Alright, alright. Leo steps forward and indicates that we should all shut up. Now, we all need to remember that Shay is here, is here to do his hit school project. That comes first. But, I did make a few other plans for when we can, what we can do in his off time. I'm pretty sure all of us know that we're going to Southwest Adventure to this bar. I'll pick those, these two up. He jerks his head toward Flynn and Carl. And then I'll then swim by the motel to get you guys at nine, alright? Sounds good. That was fucking TJ's voice. I know he's thinking about doing some stuff in Peyton towards the end of the week, but we'll make those plans later. In between those times, we should find more time to hang out. As well, make the most of this. Leo looks about done, but suddenly snaps his fingers for remembering something. Oh yeah, Chase, I saw you had a camera. You can get, get a pic of us? It would be nice for all of us to have something that isn't camera phone quality. Not sure, I was messing with the self timer earlier. Should be, should be able to get it to work. After a few minutes of me adjusting the tripod and Leo just me at the back of one of the beds, at the end of one of the beds, we managed to get into position. Alright, here goes. I set the time limit fast block the spot Leo stayed for me. This is such a cute image because I, I, I fucking love it. It's so cute. And yes, he's just genius. He's a fucking otter. I, he's just, I, I, Chase is really kind of attractive, not gonna lie. He's bland as all hell, whatever. For the next two hours, we watch a movie on TV, not really paying attention, mostly catching up with each other and how we've been. It's good to be back, and it feels like we're all just picking up where we left off three years ago. It's really nice. Finally, at about ten, Leo, Carl, and Flynn head out. I spend the next twenty minutes tinkering with the equipment, making sure it's all in order for shooting the next day. Once TJ finishes getting ready for bed in the bathroom, I do as well, before heading, we're getting to bed head to toe with TJ. There's a soft glow from the corner as TJ sits at the table reading something. Jenna sits at the table reading something. I lay in bed, staring at the, t at the ceiling, waiting for her to go to sleep. Alright, so first dream sequence, here we go. There's a chain attached to my ankles. I walk, I walk away from the lake, my legs and feet kicked in mud. I look back, seeing the chain snaking back around the rocks and reeds before disappearing into the water. Looking ahead again, I see Leo. He's smiling, waving at me. I walk towards him and the chain stays slack, pulling easily out of the water. There's an anchor in the lake, I say. I stare at him, but he doesn't say anything. He just keeps on smiling. I crouch in the rock, dropping the chain around my wrist a few times. Leo kneels next to me, rubbing my back and sticking out his arm to compare our bracelets saying that everyone gets one. He seems happy, and I am stuck here. I can't even stand up to walk. And now it's going to be Sunday, so I'm going to stop the video. Yep, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Oh boy. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, let's go back to the title. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed the first part of this. That was day one of this. Saturday and Sunday are the prequel, and then Monday is the day... Not the prequel, but like, uh, the prologue, and after that, on Monday, you begin the routes. So, I hope you enjoyed, um, come back next video if you liked it, I guess, and I'll see you next time in the cave. Fuck off.